Well, folks, we are in the middle of a South Carolina swamp tonight, and I tell you what, it's been about 15 years, but you've seen us do these kind of hunts before, and I've got two coon hunting veterans with me tonight. I got Mr. Sherman Frost from South Carolina with Chief uh, the Walker, and then we got Jeremy Shannon with Ugly, and we're going to be looking and hunt that coon tonight, and I tell you what, guys, these are two great dogs, okay? Now, uh, Jeremy, I'm gonna go to you first. Now, tell us a little bit about Ugly. Then I'll ask Sherman about Chief. Ugly's about, <laughs> he got that. Ugly's about, he's two years old. Um, He's a nice dog. He's just, uh, he's just not consistent enough. He kind of up and down his, his uh, hunting mind, but he's ready to go hunting now. Okay. All right. Now, Sherman, tell us a little bit about Chief. Now, he's a veteran like you. Chief, Chief is a veteran. He's a, he's a senior citizen like me. Chief, uh, <laughs> he's seven years old, probably be eight in uh, May. He's uh, a UKC Grand Knight champion. He's a PKC Silver champion. And uh, he's uh, been around the world a few times uh, in competition hunts all over the United States. And he just a, a pleasure to hunt most of the time. Well, I, I got to ask you both tonight. Now we're going to be hunting a little bit different. Now, you know, normally we've done uh, coon hunts where the dogs all come to one tree and all that sort of thing. But you guys kind of you do it a little bit differently here. T tell me a little bit about how we're going to hunt and and uh, tree these coons. What we'll do tonight is we'll we'll cast both the dogs together to start with. Okay. Chances are they they will be on independent trees unless they get on a coon red hot, but they they normally hunt by themselves and doing their own thing. Okay. We train the dogs specifically not to uh, to pack up and be pack hunters. We train them to be uh, very independent and to, and to find their own coon and not to, not have training wheels on them, on themselves, so to speak. <laughs> so hopefully we'll be going to a lot of trees tonight. Well, I I can't wait now, Jeremy. I tell you what, yep. Who's going to win, Ugly or Chief? If I had to put my money on it, I'd say Chief. You think? Oh my gosh, you ain't got no now, I, got, I got faith in Ugly. All right, man. Chief's well, I, consistent. <laughs> well, folks, listen, I tell you what, in the middle of the South Carolina swamp tonight, we've got some raccoons that we're going to be looking for. And I tell you what, I think these guys are going to put them on us. Man, next, the next time you see us, we're going to be baying up a tree, okay? Hunt that coon. Let's go, guys. Woo! That is catfishing from Sand Peak. Perfect Lake Hartwell Hybrid. This week's destination is brought to you by Chevrolet. Chevrolet, finding new roads in the outdoors. Today's Chevrolet destination features another great hunting destination that you can find more information about by going to Bob's Top 16 at www.bobredfern.com. And be sure to check out all the award-winning Chevrolet vehicles at chevrolet.com for your next outdoor destination. Okay. Hear me? Okay. All right, there we go. They're wired for sound, man. Now, on the average, guys, let me ask you this, and I, while they're out band, what is the normal for you guys? I mean, you know, we're here. This obviously has is, is got some pretty good um specimens of coons in in the area around here but one thing that i know you guys don't do we're not shooting uh the raccoons tonight okay because you guys use these over and over and over to train that's correct and, and you know that's kind of part of the sport so um how long is the average time before these dogs will pick one up it just depends from night to night if the coons is down it i mean it won't take long if they ain't down they have to go a little bit further just depend it varies every night that's Coon hunting is different every night. You can go to the same spot every night. It's, you're never going to have the same night, two <laughs> nights in a row. Well, guys, I tell you what, I really do appreciate y'all taking us along tonight because, again, there are so many of our viewers out there who just absolutely, they're, they're just, you know, so caught up, basically, in this kind of sport. You're trying to explain to people, you know, why, why don't we don't shoot every coon. It's kind of like when you, when you watch the pro bass fishermen on TV and it's catch and release. That's right. If, if you ride that coon out on your tailgate, then you can't you can't tree him tomorrow night. And so it's about it's about the sport. It's not about about the, how many how many you try to harvest. Well, it's it's like bird hunting. It's about the dogs. It's about I, the dogs. I, I, that's really what it's about. And of course, you have to have something to, to train them on. So and you got to keep them. So um, I, shooting a coon really don't 
do nothing for me. I really no. don't. It's just a dog. If you got a really nice dog and a nice dog work, that's a whole. That's all I need. There you go. In all the different competition hunts and the different registries, your AKC registry, your UKC registry, and the PKC registry, um, you don't harvest the coons when you when you're competition hunting. That's right. And so we train our dogs to, when they tree a coon, we walk them away from the tree for about a minute, recast them, and they go they go and find another coon. Off we go. All right. Yeah. Well, guys, I tell you what, man, I, I hear Chief out there right now. Woo! But stay tuned, cause I'm telling you, we're still hunting that coon. Mm. All right, all right, Jeremy, look, man. That... That's ugly, a... ugly's done. This is two for tonight, man. Yeah, you got two right now. You got that good feeling. I know Chief probably still gonna win. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> Ugly trees and both these viney trees. That well, first coon been up there a while. That one's been up there a while as much as he's looking at you on the other side of the right. tree. Right, yeah. You can see his little glow, glow I'll tie, eyes. I'll tie a hug back and uh, I'll pull on the vines and that coon will probably move a little bit so you can make sure you see it. Okay. Well, he's right there in that fork. Where's Sherman? Come, Come here, Sherman. Hug. Good baby, hug. Huggy. Huggy. Good baby. Good baby, hug. Baby, uh, come here. Come here, uh. come here, uh. Now, when I pull these vines, you might want to watch your head because it'll knock stuff will come down. Yep, he's moving. He's up there. Good baby, Ugg. Uggy, good baby. Uggy, good boy. Good baby, Ugg. Good baby, Ugg. Come on, dead. Good boy, dead. Come on, dead. All right, Ugly. Good boy, come on. Come on, Ugg. Dead. <laughs> Ugly's ready to go again. <laughs> yeah, Ugg get, Ugg get wound up pretty good. Yeah, he is. Come on. <laughs> he is a good looking dog, though, Jeremy. Now, he got some weird looking eyes. Well, I'll just tell you though, he's got a good looking body to him. I mean, both Chief and Ugly yeah, really look Chief's, nice. Chief's Ugly's uncle, but we made, Ugly was a PKC champion when he was a year old. Hmm. And uh, burned him out for a little bit and finally got him back to where he, about where he needs to be. Yeah. All right, you gonna cast him again? Yeah, I'm sending him again. All right, bro. Stay tuned, more hunting for that masked bandit when we return. Here's a reminder from South Carolina DNR. Whenever you're out deer hunting, make sure you have an international orange vest and hat. Remember, safe hunting's no accident. This has been another safety hunting tip from South Carolina DNR. Understand the fish. Design the bait. No, redesign it. Trim this, add that. Definitely more of that. Perfect. Will they smash it? <laughs> Smashing it and holding it. That's how we do it. That's the formulas. Tweak the colors. Make it sing. Make it dance. Optimize design for that lateral line. All with a single track mind for getting hit, staying bit, ripping lips, for making any fish your fish. That's our science. Berkeley science, baby. This summer, happiness is a new Chevy. You can go farther. No more. I know it's up. And bring along everyone you love. Your road to happiness begins in a new Chevy. Get 1.9% financing on all 2023 Silverado 1500 Crew Cab LT Turbo Max pickups, or get 4250 total cash allowance when you trade in an eligible vehicle. Find new roads at your local Chevy dealer. Welcome to Upcountry South Carolina. Discover the six counties in Upcountry South Carolina that run from metropolitan cities with fine dining and cultural events to pristine natural beauty and all the adventure that goes with it. From hiking, rafting, to some of the best fishing in the Southeast. Six counties, one state, a million opportunities. Upcountry South Carolina, perfectly seasoned. A good way to ensure a safe outing on the water is to file a float plan with a responsible party. It can be the who, what, where, when, why, and how. This has been another safety tip from the South Carolina Department of Natural Resources. 
Bob Redfern's Outdoor Magazine is being brought to you today by these great partners. By the South Carolina Department of Natural Resources, making life better in the outdoors of South Carolina. By Abu Garcia, fish to win with Abu Garcia. By Upcountry South Carolina, Upcountry South Carolina, perfectly seasoned. By Southern Woods Plantation, offering the best quail hunting in the Southeast. And by Santee Cooper Country, Discover the natural wonders of South Carolina's Great Lakes. Yeah. Yeah, he just moves into that stick. Good baby, Oops. Good baby, Oops. Yeah, I saw it. Move his head. Yeah. Good baby hug. Good baby hug. Hey, hug it. Folks, I know you think we're kidding. Hey. That's pretty dead. thick up there. Dead hug. Dead hug. Come on. Hey, dead. Come on. Good boy. You're just going to right there where the laser is. Yeah. Come on. Sherman's dead. got him marked. Good baby. Hey, come here. Ugly Ugg did it. his thing. Man. Ugly. Come here. Good boy. Dead. Come on. Hey, Jeremy, I got to ask you. Is he a winner so far? He's a he's PKC champion too. Yeah, okay, I know, but tonight, is he a winner? Ah, uh, he, Chief got him on strike, but Chief's probably got a coon too. Okay. Come on. <laughs> okay, that's the first one. <laughs> now, now, Sherman, I have to ask you, we're, hey, what Jeremy's going to do, he's going to call the dog off and then walk it away. He's going to walk him about a minute and then recast him. Okay. And the ideal, ideal thing is that he won't you know. go back on that tree, he'll go find another coon. How long does it take to train a dog to do that? I don't really don't think the training ever stops, but you, know, start, you, you start off as a pup, and the dog, is, the dog wants to please you. Right. And so he's going to uh, do whatever you pretty much ask him to do. Some, sometimes, just kind of like me and you growing up as kids. Yeah. You know, sometimes yeah. a little hard-headed, and they need a little coaxing <laughs> to, uh, <laughs> to get the right idea. <laughs> But the, but, the, but the training never stops. Well, you know, that's true. Stops. Yeah, and, and, you know, mm -hmm. even from, from bird hunters and all that, that that's the whole, the whole thing, is you've got to continue to keep these dogs in the field. You know, we, we all expect to have the perfect hound or the perfect yeah. bird dog or the perfect this and the perfect that. But, you know, I've never seen a perfect person yet. No, sir. And there are no perfect dogs. There's no, no sir. perfect pe people. I have to agree with you. That, that is absolutely true. Training, 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 huh? Yep. He, even this youngster, I know you're still, he's still in training. He's still learning. He, <laughs> thing. he thinks he knows it all sometimes, just like I think I know it all. But, you know, it's, it's progress. It's not perfection. That's true. It's That's always true. progress. Yeah. You know, dogs are just like people, you know. Every, every person's got their faults, and all dogs have a fault, too. And you just have to decide whether you can live with that fault. Well, you know, guys, I'll tell you what. The legacy that you guys are keeping alive here by doing this, uh, that's what we're trying to get across to, to our viewers out there because, again, the amount of time and the effort and, and just the passion that you guys have put forth just to do this is, is just is remarkable. And, you know, folks, I'll tell you what, right here on Bob Redford's Outdoor Magazine, it's been about 15 years since we've been in the field doing this. But I tell you what, man, it just feels like yesterday. Got, Chief's got one. What do you think? Chief's probably got one. All right, let's well, let's, let's go do it. I know they're hard to see, folks. That's okay. You're just going to have to trust us. Jeremy, Chief saying, where have you guys been? I've been barking for an hour. <laughs> I don't see you yet. Y'all find it?
guys, t tell me a little bit about Chief. Now he's seven years old. Um, how was he to train? I mean, was he was he easy dog to break in? He was a very easy dog to break in. He uh, got a lot of pluses about him. He's not real quick on strike, but he he's pretty, still pretty fast for his age, and he's very very accurate. We're getting ready to cast Chief again. Uh, just tell what's the process here, okay? Because again, these dogs are are hunting single. Yep. Okay, so tell me what you do. Basically, treed, time back. Once he's treed, I see he's got a coon, I praise him. Once I praise him, I tell him dead. He knows that tree's dead, and he's gonna go get another. I walk him a little bit, and he's gonna go get another coon. Okay, all right. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Uh, how, fa how far away do you walk him? Yeah, I can walk Chief 10 foot, he's good. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, man. Dead. Come on, dead. Well, he just likes Sherman, veteran. Yeah, yeah, that's what Chief <laughs> is, consistent. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yep. <laughs> oh, man. They are beautifully marked dogs. They really are. And it sounds like uh, Ugly's got another one. I hope he's got another one. Oh, man, this is a good night. Got yeah, I'm telling you, they know the TV cameras are on. Coming up, we head to the Sportsman's Table for another great South Carolina certified recipe. South Carolina's Santee Cooper Country invites you to relax and get away from the pressures of everyday life from world-class fishing, golf, camping, or lakeside dining on traditional Southern cuisine. With over 450 miles of shoreline, Santee Cooper is an exciting challenge for fishing, canoeing, and kayaking offering unique outdoor adventures for the whole family. Santee Cooper Country. Discover the natural wonders of South Carolina's Great Lakes. To receive a free newsletter and e-news, just log on at SanteeCooperCountry.org. This summer, happiness is a new Chevy. You can go farther, tow more, and bring along everyone you love. Your road to happiness begins in a new Chevy. Get 1.9% financing on all 2023 Silverado 1500 Crew Cab LT Turbo Max pickups, or get 4250 total cash allowance when you trade in an eligible vehicle. Find new roads at your local Chevy dealer. Nestled in the western part of South Carolina is the old 96 district. Comprised of Abbeville, Edgefield, Greenwood, Lawrence, and McCormick counties, this region is rich in history, fishing, hunting, and small town flavor. Old 96 district is part of the South Carolina freshwater coast, covering over 2,000 miles of shoreline, which offer many fishing opportunities and is home to the only wild turkey museum in the world. Local businesses offer a wide variety of unique gifts and foods. Make sure you discover the undiscovered wonders of the old 96th District of South Carolina. The Sportsman's Table is brought to you by the South Carolina Department of Agriculture. Whether you live in South Carolina or coming to vacation, make sure you're purchasing South Carolina-grown farm products. Make sure your food is South Carolina certified. It's a matter of taste. Folks, welcome into this week's Sportsman's Table here on the beautiful campus of Ori Georgetown Tech, the International Culinary Institute here in Myrtle Beach. I'll tell you what, and with me is my guest chef, Ed Dombrowski. It's been a while, okay? Ed's back. He's got a new look. I love the glasses, okay? <laughs> But down at Lee's Farm, you guys are making it happen. That's okay? right. Thanks, Bob. Thanks Ed, for having me back, back again. Oh, I appreciate Ed, it. You're I, I love the new look, man. Awesome. Thank you. You know, appreciate now you it. can see the dial in the. Exactly. The, yeah, yep, yep. 
<laughs> you know, we're all getting old. That's brother. right. You got all that right. What do you got for us this All right, week? today, you know, we're catching blue crab right now in South Carolina, so I'm going to do a blue crab fried rice. Oh, wow. It can be used as a side dish, yeah. or you can use it, you know, as a, uh, as a meal. Really? Okay, so okay. what we're going to do is I got a little bit of oil in the plant, okay. pan there. We're going to throw some fresh garlic. Oh, yeah. And ginger. Spice of life. Yep, mm -hmm. garlic and ginger. Okay, give it that little bit of that Asian flair. Okay, you guys are in full swing down at the farm. Oh, it, yeah, it's it's full swing now, that time of the year. The certified products are rolling out yep, the door. Exactly, exactly. So we're gonna get that going real quick. Okay, now I'm gonna throw a little bit of scallion in there, a little bit of cilantro. Okay, mm, that okay. smells great. Yeah, it's phenomenal. Ooh. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to add in rice, and I this is uh, Marsh Hen Mills rice out of South Carolina. Okay, gotcha. We're gonna add that in there. Oh yeah. Okay. You know, that's a really fine grain. Yeah, too. real fine grain, yeah. wonderful rice, real popular uh, at the market. Mix all those flavors around, you smell that aroma. Yeah. Okay. So now what I'm going to do to darken it up like a fried rice, I'm going to throw in some soy sauce and some fish sauce. And the fish sauce is going to give it some the saltiness. Oh, really? Yep. I like that sauce. I'm going to put that in there to give it some color. Hmm. Okay. You know, this is a great dish. Get home. Flap it. Real, and go. real, yep, real easy to do. Yeah. So, see folks, if you want a copy of Ed's recipe, just log on to bobredford.com. Go to the sportsman's table. You'll be able to see Ed right there live on the video and get the recipe. Great. So, what we're going to do now is I'm going to add some blue crab. Okay. Okay, some blue crab meat. Oh, wow. Yep. Mm. Oh, I love this. That is such one meat. Nothing. I mean, nothing like it. No, oh, man. Nothing okay. finer. That's mm. right. Now, I'm going to squeeze a little bit of lime in there, give it a okay. little bit of citrus. Yeah. Okay, now that's cooking there. And now what we're gonna do is, with fried rice, there's egg in it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a little room here in the middle. Okay. And I'm gonna take some egg, ah. put that in there. Now these are the whole egg or just the a whole egg. Okay. Whole egg. I got you. And you're gonna let that cook, and then as it cooks, it's gonna break up into little crumbles. Right. And then we're just gonna mix it around, and that gives it, you know, it absorbs a lot of that flavor. It's phenomenal. Oh, wow. Okay. Look at that. Okay, so see how it got all crumbly? Oh, yeah. Okay, and it's absorbed a lot of that flavor. It did. Okay, so now we're going to plate it, okay? okay? And like I said, it could be a side dish with, you know, another piece of uh, seafood or something like that. Sure. Or you can do a main dish. Oh, good. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in the center of the plate. Okay. Mm. Okay. I mean, look how beautiful. Look at the chunks Ooh. of blue crab in that. Oh, okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to finish it off. I'm going to throw a little bit of fresh scallion on there. Okay. A little bit of fresh cilantro. Another little squeeze of lime. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. okay. And then uh, uh, just put a wedge there. But here, most important, with Asian fried rice, a lot of times you get what they call a yum yum sauce, which is made with uh, like right. Japanese mayo. Yeah. Well, down in the south, South Carolina, we have comeback sauce from the rustic table down in Pauly's Island. Chef Adam Kirby makes it. Gotcha. We sell it in the market. Yeah. And we're going to top that off with a little bit of this uh, comeback oh, sauce. Oh, it makes you want to come back. Oh, my goodness. Look how great that is. Oh, and we sell that in the market. It's, it's, it's a phenomenal sauce. You can use it on seafood, chicken, rice. That is awesome. Absolutely. Man. And that's your finished product. Well done, brother. Thank you. Oh, man, I tell Appreciate you what. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Absolutely. And Lee's Farm, Merle's Inlet. Stop down there. I tell you what, it's a great place. They're in full swing. Grab you up some South Carolina certified vittles and carry them on out the door, and you can make a dish just like this. Again, buy South Carolina. Nothing's finer, nothing's fresher. Log on to CertifiedSC.com and see what's fresh on the menu. We'll be right back here again next week with another great recipe on the Sportsman's Table. To find out more information on supporting local South Carolina farmers and their products, visit CertifiedSC.com. It's a matter of taste.
Take a journey off the beaten path to Lake Hartwell Country. Tucked away in the northeast corner of South Carolina, Lake Hartwell Country is a hidden gem with waterfalls, mountains, beautiful lakes, and history dating back to Revolutionary War times. For the outdoor enthusiasts, Lake Hartwell Country offers fishing, hiking, water recreation, horseback riding, and so much more. Come visit Lake Hartwell Country, the land by the blue wall. This summer, happiness is a new Chevy. You can go farther, tow more, and bring along everyone you love. Your road to happiness begins in a new Chevy. Get 1.9% financing on all 2023 Silverado 1500 Crew Cab LT Turbo Max pickups or get 4250 total cash allowance when you trade in an eligible vehicle. Find new roads at your local Chevy dealer. Southern Woods Plantation. The name itself conjures up images of a time gone by. A time of towering pines, mule-drawn wagons, and covey after covey of Bob White quail. Southern Woods Plantation has been chosen as one of the top six hunting destinations in America. They offer great hunting, comfortable lodging, wonderful food, and world-class dogs. Southern Woods Plantation, where the past can still be experienced today. Bob Redfern's Outdoor Magazine is being brought to you by these great partners. Chevrolet, find new roads with Chevrolet. By Lake Hartwell Country. The land by the blue wall. By the South Carolina Agriculture Department. It's a matter of taste. By the old 96th District of South Carolina. Come discover the unexpected wonders of South Carolina's 96th District. And by South Carolina Embroidery and Screen Printing your one stop for all your company's promotional needs. Well, folks, I'd like to thank our guides tonight, Jeremy Shannon on our far left and, and the old veteran here. <laughs> I tell you what, Frost. Sherman Frost, I'm telling you, Tennessee volunteer, my gosh, you know. Oh, we came all this time, and of course, I graduated in 78. You graduated in 73. 73. God bless you, I will tell you. But guys, listen. I really appreciate you taking us tonight because, again, you've showed us a different perspective here about what coon hunting is about on the PKC and, and all of that sort of thing as opposed to the others in the UKC. I learned something tonight. And again, just like you said earlier in the show, just like the dogs, we all learn and continue to learn. And one of my favorite mottos is always to, to remain teachable. That's true. Always you got to teachable. always be open. And, you know, I, and that stick works on him, doesn't it? Sometimes. <laughs> And I'm glad he decided. It's got, it's got scars all over it for a reason. There you go. I, I can get worked up every once in a while. <laughs> well, Jeremy, I tell you what, you've got a great dog over there. Both you guys do. And, and Chief, and I hear Chief, he's barking about 550 yards away. And they've got all these great toys and tools in order to hunt. And, and it's just amazing that the evolution of coon hunting, where it's come from over the last 15 to 20 years. So, guys, my hat's off to you. I, I know you enjoy this. You love it. I know our viewers are going to love it again. Again, I've been away from it a little bit long. I'll have to come back. We'll have to come back. Please, Maybe yeah. we'll come back for a, a championship run, uh, and we'll follow you guys there, and we'll see how ugly and, and cheap does. I can promise you we'll still be hunting. Yeah, man, and I appreciate it very much. <laughs> God, bless, God, God bless you guys. Thank you so much. And, folks, listen, that's our show for this week. As I always like to say, the outdoor is my passion. I want it to be yours, too. We'll see you right back here again next week on another episode of Bob Redfern's Outdoor Magazine. And tree that coon. Yeah, and hey, I'm telling you, hunt that coon and tree that coon. There you go, uh, ugly. But listen, you, you made it safe tonight, buddy. He ain't going to sell you. You did good. <laughs> <laughs>